Welcome to Canna Spader Christmas. So you got your pixels. You got your controller. But how do you hook them up? Pixels generally have three wires, power, data, and ground. Some have four, and that adds a clock line. Each pixel has data in and data out. And now this is from the pixels perspective. So data from the controller goes to data in on the first pixel. This is the chip on the pixel. It does the color mixing. This is what makes it a smart pixel. This pixel has three RGB LEDs. This other pixel is similar, power, data, and ground. Uh, arrows show data flow through the pixel. This is where you connect pixels to this controller. Notice it has ground, clock, data, and voltage or plus. Pixels will generally be marked this way, but I did have someone tell me they had pixels with an A, B, and C, which really isn't very helpful. In that situation, just contact the manufacturer if you've got pixels marked that way and find out which pins are which. Every controller that I've ever purchased comes with these little plugs where you uh, they go into the port like that. I've got a small screwdriver. It's about a two millimeter wide blade. It fits into these screws perfectly. Uh, and so all you do is, you'll see these little gates come down. And I open them up. Usually go about seven turns. You can actually see the writing on this pixel. Well, that's power, data, and ground. It goes in like this. So this first one is power, data, and ground. I usually get one of them just in there good. Just snug, not too tight yet. Make sure I can get the other wires in there good. And there you go. I have always used tin copper for these types of connections and I've never had any of them back out. But somebody brought this up in the comments that after a while they're able to just pull the wires out because there's high current going through there and it just doesn't hold on to it very well. So the suggestion was to use something called a boot lace ferrule. I didn't know what those were, so I got a kit from Amazon that has all these different size ferrules in it, and it includes the crimping tool. So this crimping tool crimps down on it from the center and holds on to the wire. So let's put one on here. You need to find the one that's the right size for the wire. One advantage to using these is you don't have to tin the wire. You just strip it to the length of the ferrule, insert it, and crimp it down. I'll include a link to the kit that I bought. This was a little over 25 US dollars on Amazon. And it uh, seems like a pretty cool thing. I might start doing this on all my connectors. Uh, certainly if you don't like to tin the wires and or you're having problems with them backing out, this is a great solution for that. Three wire pixels don't have a clock line, so no connection is required for that pin. The first way to connect pixels to a controller is directly. This is the best method electrically because the distance between the controller and the first pixel is very short. Now, it doesn't necessarily work well for a real display since the distance between the controller and the first pixel is very short. The second connection method is to use some sort of pigtails. Now, these come from Ray, so they match up with pixels that you get from him and, and that come with pigtails already. Uh, you come out from the controller with one pigtail and connect that to the pigtail on your pixels. This allows you to put an extension between these two so you can move these out away from the controller. I use a bunch of these extensions, uh, but you could also just add a longer wire to the front of your string with a, a short pigtail to get the distance you need if you don't want to pay the extra expense for the extensions. That is the safest way for connecting up to here because you have the protection of these fuses. 
Now there are some times when I will just use data and ground out of the controller and then I will go somewhere usually directly to the power supply with the power lead. If you do that go through a fuse. Chances are you'll be standing up on a ladder trying to, to mess with something and you'll take a gnat up the nose and <clears throat> like that and you short the wires together and your whole show's messed up. You don't want that to happen. So just put an inline fuse in here. You can get single versions where um, you basically just solder it on or connect it up through there however you do your connections. Um, or you can get something like a hex fuse from Hanson Electronics where there's multiple paths that are multiple fuses that you can use or uh, sometimes I use the the hella fuse block and just use uh, terminals on that that's what I used in the big box just put a fuse in line um, it's just insurance if you're going to bypass the the power distribution on the board but another case would be for if you're doing power injection you still want to put a fuse uh, to protect even power injection wires Displays are like snowflakes, no two are the same, but I hope this video gave you some information on options for connecting power to your pixels. Bottom line is always put a fuse on the power line. If you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs run. Jet flying over. There's so many cars going back.